So I got this Nebula capsule projector yesterday. I'm not going to bother showing you an unboxing video because well, I've already got it out of the box and there are plenty of other ones on uh, YouTube to see that. But I'm going to give you a quick tour of the device itself and some of the menus and how to get video playing on it. So this is the Nebula, it's about the size of a can of Coke and uh, it uses a battery built into it and you also get uh, a power supply, a quick charge 3 power supply and you get some like a USB, micro USB power cable and you get an infrared remote control with it as well. That's not bad actually. The light source, which I don't think is mentioned anywhere else, is actually a, it's an RGB LED, so you get a good sort of 25, 30,000 hour playback out of that. So there's no real need to worry about changing a bulb. Um, on top of the device here, it's got some, they're not um, touch sensitive, but there's physical button presses. You've got a power uh, switch there, and you've got your volume switches, and this one here, switches between video and uh, Bluetooth playback. The Nebula logo there changes colour depending on what it's doing. So when it's powered up in projector mode, it's blue. When it's uh, charging up, it goes red. And when it's fully charged, it goes green. Uh, around the back here, you've just got, uh, uh, it says input and that's where you plug in the micro USB and you get a little uh, micro USB to full size USB connector as well. So you can plug in a memory stick with some footage on it or a portable hard drive. And you've also got a full size HDMI socket on the back there as well. Uh, around the side here, this is uh, a dial for uh, adjusting the focus. Uh, it is a little bit fiddly, it has to be said, um, is the focus. And then around the front here, you've just got the aperture uh, where the video is projected from. I'll just uh, switch, switch lights off and I'll just show you a few uh, bits from uh, on screen. Okay, so now I've got the projector. It's just projecting on my dining room wall at the moment. And I've measured the screen size there. That's a 60 inch screen. And realistically, I'd said that's probably about as big as you want to project it. Uh, the focus goes a little bit soft uh, if you project any larger than that. Although it does say on the website that it will run up to 100 inches, I'm sure it will. Uh, brightness, as you can see, I'm in a dark room here, and that's more than bright enough. Uh, and surprising, you know, considering it's only a 480p resolution, it's actually very good and it will, you know, handle high resolution playback without any problems. Uh, this is the default screen when you switch the device on. And I've loaded a few extra apps. Um, I'm not going to go through all the menus. I'm just using the infrared remote here to control it. Uh, it does have the a mouse button on here that you can use. If, if some apps do require a mouse or are expecting a touch screen, so you can do that. You can also control it via the app, which is basic to say the least, but it's uh, functional at least. So I'm not going to go through all the menus. They're fairly self-explanatory. Uh, file manager there will only allow you to manage local files or uh, files on a memory stick or portable hard drive that you plug directly into the USB. Uh, network just does your network settings and uh, your general settings. Uh, Bluetooth, at the moment the speaker that's on it is good but I wouldn't like to think I was watching a long film with that speaker, it's a little bit on the tinny side and there isn't much bass. So I've just got mine set up on Bluetooth, uh, connected to uh, an Orky SK-1 speaker. You can probably just see it in the distance there underneath the screen. It's only a small speaker, but it's, it's, uh, it's better than the, the built-in one. Uh, Projector-wise, you can... Uh, image mode, um, it's got two image modes. You've got standard, well, auto. You've got standard mode, which is bright, and if I switch it to battery mode, you'll see it just dims the picture slightly. Uh, I've got mine sort of set permanently in standard mode because you can run it off an external battery if you want to do that. Uh, auto keystone correction you would just leave that on and if you've got a rear projector screen then you can project it in mirrored mode so that it projects from the rear or if you want to hang it from a ceiling uh, you can do that as well and it'll turn the picture upside down that's quite good. 
uh, app manager. It does have a built-in app manager, um, and that allows you. Uh, it's called Aptoid. Is the built-in app manager? It's not the Play Store, unfortunately yet, but it's got a fairly decent selection of apps uh, in there that you can use to start with. Um, I've just loaded in some other ones. I'll show you in a minute. Um, upgrade allows you to put in the latest firmware. Capsule control just tells you about the app and in general you don't really have anything useful in there, it's all fairly at default, is that. Um, it comes with Ted, YouTube, Netflix built in. Uh, they're very basic. Uh, I've also installed BBC iPlayer, Plex, uh, VLC Player and ES File Explorer and I've stuck a couple of other bits on BBC News, uh, VLC and Kodi, although I've not managed to get Kodi connected to my um, NAS drive yet, it won't seem to connect for some reason. But Plex works okay. So BBC iPlayer, you know, it's quite a responsive uh, device. It's, I think it's Android 7.1 once it's been upgraded. And uh, it's, you know, it's not bad. Uh, this is an app where you cannot use the basic controller. You've got to turn on the mouse feature. So it's a little bit fiddly. Um, but it's, it's not bad, let's say you can uh, watch programs on there, I'll, I'll just, in fact I'll just play something, you can see how quick it sort of buffers. I bear in mind I'm on, playing it back on Wi-Fi um, from, uh, you know, my Wi-Fi is at the other end of the house so it's fairly limited signal and we'll just put something from Blue Planet on. Intimidates See the motions, very good, very smooth playback. And it's brightened up easily, and the sound through a, certainly through a remote speaker is very, very good. And it'll switch out of the, uh, it'll go back easily, nice and quick. Uh, Plex, I've got mine hooked up to, I've got um, a NAS driver, a Synology DJ216. DS216J I think it is and that's running the Plex server and uh, it seems to work absolutely fine so I can you know go into movies and I've just got some movies on there uh, play that and I'm sure that will play back fine so this is a 1080p DTS audio video so it does take a few seconds to buffer it uh, but uh, I'll just wind it on a bit. That should uh, catch up in a second. There you go. This is played back over Wi Fi. Port is very good. I'm sitting here probably seven feet from the screen, eight feet maybe, and you know, I cannot see any pixels or uh, any kind of uh, hint of the screen resolution. There's a home button on the remote which takes you straight back to that as well. Uh, VLC just allow, it gives you another option for a different type of video player. Uh, ES File Explorer, that's the only way I've been able to find to directly browse my NAS drive and play back files from that. It's a little bit fiddly, it's another mouse only app but it's not too bad. Uh, and that's about it so far, um, not really found uh, anything else. Well, one thing that's um, isn't really explained when you look at the website is how you play back video from your phone. Um, I'll try and do a capture in a minute that just shows um, how you do that. But basically, you just play back any video like you would on YouTube uh, or BBC iPlayer or any sort of local content on your phone and you just click AirPlay. And uh, in the AirPlay menu shows the nebula. So you just click that and then it just starts casting straight to the actual uh, projector, which is pretty good. And uh, the quality is very, very good. It does support Chromecast as well, although I haven't really found it works that well on the iPhone, so it probably works a lot better if you've got an Android phone. But certainly if you're using an iPhone, then uh, using AirPlay seems to be the way to go. Um, doesn't work with SkyGo, unfortunately. SkyGo seems to detect that you're streaming it to something, uh, but certainly BBC iPlayer and a few other apps uh, work fine. Uh, the built-in YouTube app is, it's okay, not brilliant. Um, 
but it doesn't allow you to sign in, which is a little bit annoying. So you've got to, if you want to find a particular video that you already know, then you have to sort of search for it uh, manually. But it's not bad. It's okay, it's better than nothing. So far, so very good. Um, first impressions for a 200 pound projector. I think it's uh, it's very, very good. Uh, my only criticism of it, and I'll, I'll stop speaking so you can hear it, is it has quite a, a loud fan. I don't know if you can hear that. Which is obviously very noticeable when you're sat at the distance uh, that I'm sat from it and you've no, no, no audio on. But when you play back some video, then it drowns out the, the hissing from the fan very quickly and you, you don't really hear it. Um, I have ordered um, a small tripod. I think it was only about seven pound or something uh, because, because you can see even to project it at sort of reasonable height on the wall, it's, it has to be elevated. And as you can see, I've sort of got mine stood on a, a Pringles can on my dining table at the moment, which sort of tends to get it to the correct height. But I've just ordered a cheap seven pound tripod uh, and I'm sure that'd be absolutely fine and that's extendable so I can put it on the floor as well then rather than having to sort of put it on a table but overall very impressed with it it's a really nice piece of kit it's a really well made well constructed solid uh, black object and uh, yeah very good I think you should buy one